In this lecture, we will examine what we can and cannot do with text elements in ArcPy. I'll start with ArcGIS Pro open to the layout project that we created near the beginning of this section. Our layout currently has only one element on it, and as we can see in the contents pane, that is the map frame. ArcPy does not provide functionality to create a text element, although, as we will see shortly, once the layout has one text element, that text element can be cloned to make more. To get a text element into the layout, I'll use the Insert tab to create a new text element by clicking at a location on the layout. I wasn't fussy about where I clicked, because I planned to move it to a precise location using code anyway. Notice how that text element has become the second element in the contents pane. I'll right click and open its properties. It's often worth doing this so that you can be reminded of the properties each type of element has available via the ArcGIS Pro application. This can be a guide as to what might be available to access via ArcPy, and will sometimes reveal properties that are not accessible to ArcPy. For example, on the Placement tab, an ArcGIS Pro user can use the nine little squares to set the anchor point for a text element, but that cannot be done from ArcPy. I know that I want to centre my text element on the page, and to set the distance between the top of the text and the top of the page, so I'll set its anchor point to be the centre top. Another good practice is to always give your text element a name that you will be likely to remember when you're trying to manipulate it on the layout. This text element will display a title, so on the Options tab, under General, I'll set the name to be Title underscore Text, and hit Enter. And that shows me the name of that layout element changing in the Contents pane. I'll close the Format text pane, save the project, and close ArcGIS Pro. I'm going to use Windows Explorer in the LPA Scripts folder to copy the makepdf.py script, and to paste it, and then to rename the copy to be called working with text elements.py. I'll open that in the idle of ArcGIS Pro. I'll create a text object called title text under a new comment of text objects. I'll change its text size to be 20 points. And remembering that its anchor point is upper centre, I'll set its X position to be half the page width, and its Y position to be 10 millimetres down from the top of the page. I'll run the script to confirm that we have been able to create that text object and change its size and position. And there's the text with a different size to what I had initially. I'll close Adobe. Now I would like to change that string displayed in the text element to be Iraq, and I would like it to appear in bold.
To do the bolding, I'm using one of ArcGIS Pro's text formatting tags. There are a number of these that you can use to do things like italicizing, changing color, and doing subscripts or superscripts. I'll test again. We see the requested country name. If I fit it to the window, we can see that that is in bold. I'll close Adobe and just make sure you keep closing Adobe between tests so that the next test can open up. Now I would like to put a subtitle beneath the country name of Iraq on my map. First I clone the title text element to create a new text object named subtitle text. I'll set the size of that subtitle text to be 14 points. And I'll set the subtitle text to be Map of Country with Topographic Background. I'll reposition it to be 20 millimeters from the top of the page. I don't need to set its element position X because I want it to be centered on the page and that got pulled through when we cloned this subtitle text from the title text element. I'll test to see that the desired subtitle text is positioned nicely in a suitable text size. That looks good, so I'll close Adobe. I've just realized that on the PDF file just now, the title text was in a smaller text size than the subtitle text. And looking back at the script here, I can see that I've made an error. So I've got test size when it should have been text size. I'll just change that to an X there and I'll run it again. That looks much better with Iraq in 20 points and the subtitle in 14. I'll close Adobe. Both text elements that we've done so far are examples of what I would call static text because the strings displayed in them are always the same. But I might want to do a map identical to this one for any country, not just Iraq. The next thing I'll do is add a country name variable and use it to populate both the definition query to enable me to zoom to it and also the title text. I'll set the variable after the import statement. And then I'll use it and some Python string formatting to set the title text element. The title text is now an example of what I would call pseudo-dynamic text because the string display depends on the contents of the country name variable. Now I'll add some code to use the country name variable to set a definition query on the countries layer, zoom to that filtered layer, and then zoom out 5%. I'll place this code after the map frame object, and there's a bit of it, so I'm going to paste it in rather than type. Here we're setting the definition query on the countries layer to be where it has name equals, and in this case it'll be Malaysia. It then gets the extent of the country's layer, once defined like that, and uses that cell country extent to set the extent of the map frame, and then it zooms out the map frame just a little bit. I'll test to make sure that pseudonymic text for the country name works, and to see whether zooming to that country works too. It does, so I'll close Adobe. ArcGIS Pro also supports true dynamic text, 
where the string displayed is derived from either the operating system or properties of the project and its components. Dynamic Text uses tags, similar to HTML, and enables us to combine both dynamic and static text in a single text element. To get an overview of what dynamic text elements look like to an end user of ArcGIS Pro, I'll close the Python shell window of idle to release any locks, and then I'll open ArcGIS Pro to the layout project. Notice how the layout which we have been using in our script still has only the map frame and a single text element in it. Everything else that we are seeing in the PDF files that we are creating is being added and manipulated as the code runs. When an end user of ArcGIS Pro wants to add a dynamic text element, they go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and look under Dynamic Text. First I'll choose to insert the current time from the system category. I'll move that to somewhere where I can read it, but we will not be saving the changes that we are making to the project, so there is no need to be fussy. I'll double click the current time text to open its properties in the format text pane. In fact, the format text pane is already open. I'm going to insert another dynamic text element. And this time it's from the project group and it's the path. Now I'll just click back on the current time element and work with that one first. Here on the options tab of the format text pane, you can see that the text, if we look at the text view, contains some static text saying current time and then two dynamic tags for the date and the time. I'm going to highlight and copy that text. Then I'll click on the path text down in the layout to see its properties in the format text pane. And if I go to the text view of that again, then at the beginning I'll paste in what I just copied. And then I'll click enter to put it onto a new line. I just clicked on the layout to see that updated. So we now have both the current time and the path to our project's APRX file in the same text element on the layout. If I click on that again, look at its text view, and take a copy of that, I can then bring that into my Python script. So I'll bring my Python script to the front, down under my text objects, I'll just paste it in here, and I've now got what I need to start doing the same thing using code. So I'll close ArcGIS Pro and I won't save the changes to the project. In the script, I'm going to clone another text element. I'll take a copy of this. I'll paste it in there. And I'm going to call the new text element date path text. I'm going to set the date path text so that its text property has this text with some edits that we copied out of ArcGIS Pro. Now notice that I'm using a single quote here, and that's because there's going to be some embedded double quotes. I'm not going to use the time. I'll delete that. I'm going to set its text size to be 7 points and position its anchor point, which will be upper centre still, at a Y value of 5 millimetres. I'm 
I'll test again. We can see it down here at the bottom. I'll use the marquee zoom to look at that more closely. So I can see from this date that we might have some confusion between American and Australian slash British ways of putting out dates because the Americans usually put the month first whereas Australia and Britain does the day first. I'll close Adobe. To see what other date formatting options I have, I'll go to the help page titled Add and Modify Dynamic Text. This page is also linked to, from within ArcGIS Pro, on that Format Text pane. If I click on System Tags in the right hand side, we can then see another link to learn more about formatting dates and time. And if I scroll down further there, we can see this table, which lets us see the different types of output possible. I like the look of the long output here. So I'll minimize my browser. I'll go back to my code. And where it has format in here, I'll just put the word long. So I'll test that again. So I'll use my marquee zoom again. Have a look down the bottom. And we can see there that that's a date we should have no confusion between the various countries. I'll close Adobe. In this lecture, we have seen how we can work with static, pseudodynamic, and true dynamic text using ArcPy. A key thing to remember is that although you cannot create a text element from scratch, as long as you have one existing text element in a layout, you'll be able to clone it to make as many as you want. I'll close the Python shell window and also the working with text elements.py script.